Please turn off all cell phones and beepers. Nalechabot telephonim zimuniot vituriot. The Honorable Donald J. Trump, President of the United States of America, and First Lady Melania Trump. The Honorable Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, and Mrs. Sarah Netanyahu. Rabbi Israel Meir Lau, Chairman of the Yad Vashem Council. Mr. Avner Shalev, Chairman of the Yad Vashem Directorate. Ladies and gentlemen. We have gathered here in the Hall of Remembrance at Yad Vashem on the Mount of Remembrance, Jerusalem, to commemorate the six million Jews murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators. The Ankol Children's Choir, under the direction of Daphna ben Yochanan, will open the ceremony with the song, Walk to Caesarea, written by the young poet and parachutist Hanna Senesh, who was killed behind enemy lines in Hungary in 1944, Makhelat Ankor. I am honored to invite President Donald J. Trump to rekindle the eternal flame 
in the Hall of Remembrance. Hityahadut, identification. As we rekindle the eternal light in this hall of remembrance, before the sacred remains of our martyrs, we unite with the blessed memory of six million of our people who died a martyr's death at the hands of the German Nazis and their collaborators of the Jewish communities destroyed in a wicked attempt to eradicate the name and culture of Israel. We remember with veneration the fortitude of the fighters who kindled the sublime flame of rebellion among the besieged masses of the ghettos. The heroic and persistent struggle of the masses of the House of Israel on the threshold of destruction for their human dignity and their Jewish heritage. The righteous among the nations who risked their lives to save Jews from persecution and death. I am honored to invite President Donald J. Trump, accompanied by First Lady Melania Trump, to lay the wreath on the stone slab under which the ashes of Holocaust victims from the extermination camps are buried. Hanachat Hazer. Cantor Shai Abramson will now recite El Maler Rachamim, a prayer for the souls of the martyrs. El Maler Rachamim, Shochen Bameromi. Dayan almanot Vavi etomim Hametze menucha nechona Al kanfei ashechina Bemalo Kedoshim utehorim Kezoar hakiya Meirim umazehirim Lenishemot 
ששת המיליונים אחינו ואחיותינו רבבות רבבות אלפי ישראל אנשים נשים וטרף שנהרגו שנשחטו שנשרפו שנחנקו שנקברו חיים ושהומתו בכל מיני מיתות משונות ואכזריות בידי הגרמנים הנאצים ויוזריהם ושהלכו לעולמם על קידוש השם בעבור שאנו מתפללים לעילוי נשמותיהם לכן בעל הרחמים יסתירם בסתר כנפיו לעולמים ויצרו בצרו החיים את נשמותיהם בגן עדן תהא מנוחתם ושלום על Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is now concluded. Please remain in your places until the dignitaries have left the Hall of Remembrance.
Mr. President. In the guest book. Okay. Wow. Take some job. First lady. Thank you so much. Mr. President, you're invited to deliver your message. Thank you. Prime Minister. Netanyahu, Sarah Netanyahu, Chairman Avner Shalif, and Rabbi Israel Meyer Lowe for hosting us for this moving wreath laying ceremony. We are here at Yad Vashem to honor the memory of six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust. Two-thirds of the Jews in Europe were sent to their deaths. Words can never describe the bottomless depths of that evil or the scope of the anguish and destruction. It was history's darkest hour. Millions of innocent, wonderful, and beautiful lives, men, women, and children, were extinguished as part of a systematic attempt to eliminate the Jewish people. It was the most savage crime against God and His children, and it is our solemn duty to remember, to mourn, to grieve, and to honor every single life that was so cruelly and viciously taken. As Eli Wiesel said, for the dead and the living, we must bear witness. These words should be carved into the conscience of humanity forever. Only when we remember the families who were torn apart from everyone they loved, who suffered that terrible darkness and evil, who endured the unbearable horror of the Holocaust, only then can we prevent this agony from ever repeating. This place and this entire nation are a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the Jewish people and the hope that light can shine the path beyond the darkness. Through persecution, oppression, death, and destruction, the Jewish people have persevered. They have thrived. They have become so successful in so many places, and they have enlightened the world. The State of Israel is a strong and soaring monument to the solemn pledge we repeat and affirm never again. From the depths of the suffering, the Jewish people have built a mighty nation, and the Star of David waves proudly above this cherished land. 
As long as we refuse to be silent in the face of evil, as long as we refuse to dim the light of truth in the midst of darkness, as long as we refuse to become bystanders to barbarity, then we know that goodness, peace, and justice will ultimately prevail. With sadness for the lives and dreams that were stolen from this earth, with determination to always keep the memories of the victims alive, and with resolve to confront evil wherever it threatens, we ask God to give us the strength, wisdom, and courage to chart the righteous path. Thank you. God bless the memory of the perished. God bless the survivors. God bless the Jewish people. And God bless the State of Israel. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What an incredibly moving speech that in so few words said so much. Thank you, Mr. President. This adds to a historic visit. You are the first American president who chose to include Israel on his first foreign trip. You're the first president in office to visit the Western Wall. We were so deeply moved to see that picture of you touching the stones of the wall. And may I say, we were deeply moved to see First Lady Melania Trump touching the stone of that wall. and equally moved when we saw your daughter Ivanka and your son-in-law Jared do the same. Now you touch other stones. You honor today the memory of six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust. A few weeks ago you gave a powerful speech in the Holocaust Memorial Day in Washington, D.C. And today, in this solemn place in Yad Vashem, our great monuments of remembrance, we remember the Holocaust. We remember the hatred towards Jews that consumed a defenseless people. We pledge never to be defenseless against that hatred again. And to fulfill that pledge, Israel must always be able to defend itself by itself against any threat. I appreciate America's longstanding commitment to that principle. And Mr. President, I appreciate your commitment to that principle, your commitment to the security of the one and only Jewish state, which is entrusted with securing the Jewish future. You said, Mr. President, just now, that we must confront evil in the world. We must confront the barbarians. They are sadly still with us. I want to say something about the bloody horror in Manchester last night. The slaughter of innocents must be unconditionally condemned and unflinchingly confronted, no matter where it occurs, in Manchester, San Bernardino, or Jerusalem. Terror is terror is terror. We must all unite to defeat it. Mr. President, today you call the terrorists losers. I know you agree with me that it's our job to make sure that they continue to lose. We will defeat them. Thank you. Thank you to First Lady Melania Trump. Thank you for taking such a strong stand for Israel and the Jewish people. It comes from the heart of all of us. Thank you, Mr. President.
Mr. President. We have here a unique uh, memorial, a token of remembrance. In this box, uh, we have a replica that was specifically prepared for you of a young lady, Esther Goldstein. And here is Esther Goldstein. Look at the eyes of this young lady who was murdered. But what we have here is uh, her personal album, as she filled and described uh, from 37 onward in Berlin. And it went on and on until 42nd. There uh, she was uh, deported to Latvia Riga, where she was murdered. But in this album we have, it's a replica, exact replica of, of the album with all you know, like kids are doing. What we can find here, Mr. President, is things like this, you know, Don't Forget Me, Berlin, a child wrote, a lady, and a bit afterwards she was deported to Auschwitz and murdered. Here you can see another lady, some photographs, typical to the hopes, love, and fears of youngsters, and the hope to fulfill life, and what life can bring with them. Another lady, Sonia, that writes to her, love the beautiful life, believe in God, don't be afraid of death, and wait for a better future. This was written in 42, which means in the midst of the killing and the murder, still hope, still love, and still looking in a positive way towards the world. Uh, and this is the exact replica of uh, uh, that uh, lady. Uh, we have here, Mr. President, uh, behind the scenes, the story how this album came to us. All the family members, father, mother, her brother, were murdered in Auschwitz. And uh, one sister survived. She was sent to Australia as a young girl, and she survived. After the war, cousin of the family came back to Berlin, and a neighbor was good and he kept some papers of the family throughout the war. And he was ready to give it back to the family. And this is the way that the album came back to the family. And here we have uh, with us uh, the survivor, Margot, the sister that survived and came back to build her life in Israel. And she was so kind and, uh, to donate this album to be part of the collections of Yad Vashem where we have tens of thousands of personal documents to remember and to learn and to know about uh, Jewish life uh, during the war and the period of uh, the Shoah. For us, it's a unique, I think, moment to have a glimpse to the world of the children. One and a half million children were murdered. Most of them didn't leave any trace behind them. So we can know about their lives, their wishes. And uh, tragically, actually, their life cut short, and they couldn't fulfill, actually, the life, their own life. So this kind of material give us the opportunity to study and to understand and to identify with this kind of human beings. And uh, I think that uh, we shall do our, our duty. We shall remember all of them. We shall remember Sonia and Bella and Esther and many others. This is our duty. We shall continue to do it because the remembrance of those human beings means a lot for us. As you have just said correctly, Mr. President, we have to remember each human being and we have to remember the sake of their life and the destiny that they had to do and they didn't do and didn't fulfill. And it's specifically important in our world full of tensions. And thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you again. The most of complicated, it's very meaningful to us, very moving. Thank you. Toda Raba, Margo.